I appreciate everything. How's everybody doing? It's really great to be back with you guys. I mean, look at look at all of you. It's a pleasure uh, to be back. From the bottom of my heart, you know, I can't thank you enough for having us. You know, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Shelley Plum. I am the author of a book called To Break or Bounce. Um, it is a I call it, 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 it was just written from the heart. And, you know, from the last time that we all spoke, the last time I was here, you know, a lot has changed in my life. And I have been impacted by people and places and even things. And, and I'm sure that a lot of you can relate. Some things were very good, some things not so great. Uh, but one thing has definitely remained the same. And my current book, To Break or Bounce, continues to be a manual for me that I follow in good times and bad. And the speaker that was just before me, I can tell that his passion for his writing is the same thing. I mean, it really is interesting, isn't it? I mean, most people think that authors, correct me if I'm wrong, that authors write a book with the end user in mind. And I'm sure, I mean, that very well may be true for a lot of authors, but I'm willing to bet that there are many of us out there that write their books as part of their own therapy. So let me say this again, as part of their own therapy to help shed light on a darker version maybe of the world by the power of the written word to shed light so that there is less darkness in our world. It really is amazing. So, uh, you know, I'm looking at everybody that's on right now and a lot of you I know are authors and I'm sure that you are empowered by your writing, right? Is your writing, I wanna ask you that, is your writing your therapy? I know it has for me, it has taught me so incredibly much. So what, what fuels my personal writing? You know, one thing that fuels my writing is the beautiful people that are in my life, my family, my friends, even just, you know, random acquaintances, you know, they really fuel my writing. So the one, one thing that I have learned over the years uh, since I've been with you is the true meaning of the word respect. I want you to think about that. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. I mean, when I say that word, you know what I think of? I think of that powerful song, but I think it's Aretha Franklin, right? <laughs> How many of you know that song, uh, Respect? <laughs> uh, you, uh, Brian, are you on? I don't know if Brian's on or yes, not. Yes, I'm on. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what, Brian? I know that you're really outgoing and, and, and you know what? I bet you you have a good singing voice. We'll have to bring you on and sing that song. <laughs> R-E-S-P-E-C-T. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I know is you don't really want to hear me sing. So my, my kids will definitely attest to that. So what do I mean by respect? I just want to touch on that very, very quickly. Um, over the years, I get teary-eyed when I think about it, but I have learned an incredible respect for Mother, Mother Nature and all her beautiful creatures in it. Brian, that's why I kind of called you out because I know you have a healthy respect for Mother Nature as well. I personally, just to relate some of my, my personal uh, story, I had the pleasure this year of hiking a uh, my dream mountain, and that was Mount Kilimanjaro last summer. And can I tell you how incredibly thrilling it was? And I don't mean thrilling just the mountain. The mountain was wonderful, but thrilling in the respect that there was such compassionate people there. There was loving, the guides were loving. And yes, the mountain was, oh my goodness, over the top, incredibly beautiful. But beautiful, but extremely powerful. And beautiful, but also extremely dangerous if you don't pay attention. And I learned that personally the hard way by breaking my leg. I broke my leg at 14,000 feet and I had to be life lighted down. And a lot of people, even now, are asking me as I'm healing, do you regret it? Do you regret hiking that mountain? And I have to tell you that I don't. You know, when we as a group are in mother nature, we play by her rules. And I, I that's the lesson that I learned. And there will be consequences if we don't pay attention. So yes, I will do it again. And oh yes, there are things that I will do differently. Uh, you will find respect for mother nature in all of my writing. Even my current novel that I'm writing right now, there is a tremendous respect for mother nature. And it's such a huge part of my life. So that 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 fuels my writing. You know, 
other things that free, you know, we talked about my friends, do they, in my family, do they feel my writing? Absolutely, they do. My personal purpose fuels my writing. And my experiences, like we talked about on Mount Kilimanjaro, in Mother Nature, absolutely, it does uh, fuel my writing. My question to you is this, and I want you all to think about it, is as authors, what is the stimulus behind your writing? I, I mean, anybody out there, I mean, what is the stimulus behind your writing? And you don't necessarily have to say it now. You could type it in the chat. You could even, you know, email me later. I'm just very curious. How many of you, for example, are motivated, motivated by curiosity or love or empathy? How about, you know, let's flip the, the coin on that. How about we're motivated to write by sadness or regret? or forgiveness even, you know, all of those topics are equally good and they lead to oh, writing pieces that are just incredibly wonderful and masterpieces. So that is why Caroline, who is on the call with us today, and I, we started a publishing company called P KPW Publishing. Now we firmly believe that dreams come alive with the power of the written word. Now, let me say that again. Dreams come alive with the power of the written word because we believe, we firmly believe that there is nothing more vivid than our own imagination. We, as a publishing company, we've made it our mission to give authors out there a voice to shed light, I don't know, on a, on a path to getting the brilliant ideas that are in their heads out onto paper and even onto the bookshelves. Ideas, and I think we'll all agree, are powerful. And I'm here to tell you that each of you out there and even people that we are impacting with this, this book club right now who will be watching the, the wonderful YouTube channel that you all have started, you know, they, they have ideas and they have a literary work of art that is within them, each and every one of them. So having said that, I'd like to introduce you to my beautiful partner, uh, at KPW Publishing, and that is Caroline Pena. Now, Caroline, and in addition to being a talented publisher, which she is, uh, Caroline is a successful acupuncturist, and she is a Chinese medicine expert. She's just incredible, and she has helped me personally as well. Caroline, you're on. Would, would you like to tell our audience a little bit about you? Hi, everyone. Hello. Hey. Hello. Yeah, so so nice to be here. I'm really I was really great to hear um, Joseph Sanchez talk about his seven books that he wrote, self help books. And I actually wrote down a few things also I wanted to touch on too. But uh, yeah, my name is Caroline Pena, and thank you for the introduction. I'm uh, Shelley Plum's partner in KPW Publishing. And little known fact about our publishing company, the KPW part of it stands for Kindness Project Worldwide. And so there's a long history to that, but Shelly and I both as a publishing company and publishers ourselves and book writers are obsessed and addicted to kindness. And we do a lot of projects outside of our publishing company regarding uh, spreading kindness and shedding light on people that are doing the same thing and bringing light to their companies and their projects and putting that out there so that they get the attention that they deserve all with the power of kindness. So that's why we decided to name our company that. Um, Yes, I am a Chinese medicine physician. I'm nationally board certified around the world. And so when it came to actually writing my book, which was published two years ago, it's called uh, The New Forgiveness. The, the, the journey for me of writing the book was really about my life and achieving forgiveness. And it was a way of finding a way to achieve forgiveness that was really different than any book I had read or any CD I had listened to or any meditation that I had done. It was a unique way of achieving forgiveness that I hadn't seen anywhere. Um, and so I decided to write about it. And there was a lot of understanding of the Chinese medicine that I had studied for years. I mean, they just drilled it into us in school when I was in the master's program and talking about how emotions have a certain effect on our internal, internal organs and how 
our emotions affect our energy and mm -hmm. how that can actually make us anatom anatomically and physically ill and also how we can get better based on um, how we let our emotions run through our body and how we feel them. Well, one of those emotions is unforgiveness and resentment. That's an emotion. And so I... I will say I, I, I did master that. I, I, it came to me one day, I understand what that energy was, that she, what that she was, and how that unforgiveness was affecting my life, my marriage, my family, everything. Like uh, our, the earlier author was on saying, Joseph was saying, you know, how if you're happy in one part of your life, that it affects another part of your life. So to wrap that up into the book, one of my larger chapters in the book is how your emotions affect your chi, how, how, how to achieve forgiveness by looking at forgiveness more as an energy in your body and less as, well, if I forgive someone, does that mean it's okay what they did? No. Um, does forgiveness mean that I have to, um, have contact with that person? No. And, and what is that forgiveness in my body? So it was really exciting to write the book and to be able to publish it. So that's called The New Forgiveness. It's available on over 400,000 retailers worldwide. Amazon is one, uh, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target.com, and that. So that's really exciting. And along the way, when I was publishing the book and uh, also running my Chinese medicine business, uh, Shelly Plum and I, who were now partners in KPW Publishing, uh, we have a unique ability to service our, our, our authors. And those unique abilities are unique. For one, it's us. Nobody is. Nobody else is Shelley and Caroline. So that's that's one important thing. Um, we have a full service production company, so we actually roll that into our what we do for our authors, so that their books actually get in front of people and can be purchased and seen and heard uh, as well. And then um, we also are very, I would say, attached to. Uh, the kindness foundation of, of, of publishing for authors, making sure that we hold their visions and their dreams tightly and that we, their final product is, is really what they're so happy to present as well. So a lot of things going on there kind of wrapped into one. I'm happy to answer any questions, but I'm really happy to be here. I I'm just meeting everyone here with Brightside. Um, so just really, really happy to be here and to meet everyone. And to, I'm looking forward to hearing the other authors as well. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Caroline. <laughs> and everybody, isn't she amazing? I think I might be yeah. biased, Caroline, but I think you are totally amazing. And thank you. <laughs> just, just so all of you know this, we now, Caroline and I have nicknames for one another. I call her Earth Angel. Because, <laughs> well, that is just what she is. She is an angel on Earth for me. And I love you to the moon and back, Caroline. I do. I love you too, my beacon of light. And, and <laughs> I think this is a worthwhile story because I was on a boat with her over to the Grand Bahamas when we were doing <laughs> We were doing the kindness project worldwide. So we took all of all of our production equipment over on this boat after the hurricane had hit the Bahamas. And we're in the middle, you know, somewhere between Florida and the Bahamas. And I said, you know, if this boat goes down, I hope we can, you know, do and she says, That's okay. I have a beacon. And she pulls out this large beacon. And I said, You have a beacon? And she's and I she goes, Yeah, I pay monthly and I, you know, it'll make a phone call and it'll set off an alert. And and I said, if this ship's going, I'm with her. I'm just with her. She's going to piggyback right on me. That's so funny. She's very well prepared. And I'm the one who's the follower. I'm like, I hope somebody planned this trip and I'll just go along with it. So I call her my beacon of light because she actually has one. And I think it's incredible. Oh my God, it's so <laughs> and I will always carry my beacon. That is for sure. Yes, you can count on that. So, well, thank you. Thank you. And, um, Speaking of beacons, uh, there's another beacon here with us today. Our next author I would like to introduce you to, I have known for many, many years. And in fact, he has become a very good friend that I really cherish, honestly. The man has literally traveled the world. And speaking about nature like I was, he has experienced it in so many parts of the world. I'd like to introduce you to the dynamic, the amazing, incredibly inspiring Brian Sheen. Now, his new book coming out is titled, and Brian, forgive me if I slaughter this, but Past Lives, Present, Mind, Body, and Future Family Destiny, The Healing Fields of Quantum Embodiment for Spontaneous Remission. We are incredibly honored 
to have Ryan with us tonight. And he is so, he is so darn busy to, to get his headshot. I have to tell you, Brian, I'm going to tell him the story. I, he, he, you know, he said, I will get it to you shortly. I'm on my way to Lisbon. And I'm like, Lisbon, oh my gosh. And he's, you know what, Caroline, he was going without us. So Brian, we have a new suitcase for you. It has two huge pockets. One is going to fit me and the other is going to fit Caroline in there. So I'll get that to you next time we see you. <laughs> Welcome, Brian. Do you want to tell people a little bit about you? Wow, that's thank you so much. And all the things that have been shared so far, there's so much I just want to agree with and reinforce and many of the things that Joseph talked about and particularly resonating a lot with what Carolyn just shared because these ideas have now gone well beyond ideas. They're science. And my passion is for the science of the mind, the science of the interaction between ourselves at a holding level that we inherit from our ancestors, our spirit nature, and the interactive nature of our environment, which gets reflected inside of us as an emotional response. And when Carolyn was talking about looking about how emotions affect our organs, I want to take it a little bit deeper your emotional state, which is the energy in motion within you at any one time, whether that be stillness and peace, whether that be excitement and just ah, wanting to move, or whether that's being anger or fear or whatever it is, every emotion has an embodiment both on a physical level and on a cellular level. And it changes the structure of each cell and thereby changes the way that it expresses itself. And this is a field that has been my focus for the last 40 years, and that's called epigenetics. Epigenetics is understanding the environmental influences of how we take the environment inward and reflect it in our nature at a cellular level, emotional level, mental level, physical level, spiritual level. And we have to understand that who and what we are is a reflection of that environment, of our interaction perceptions, decisions, the way that we respond and interact with people. And this is all part of what I call quantum embodiment. Epigenetics is what is above and around each gene that gets it to respond and either turn on or turn off to be able to help create optimal health and power or to create illness and disease. And depending how these genes are being activated on a daily basis through whatever it is that you're living your life. And as Joseph brought up very well, meditation, one of the most wonderful things you can do, as is getting yourself connected with nature. And I mean the nature of the world around you. And whether you're climbing Kilimanjaro, uh, which I remember doing 40 years ago, and loved it. It was so spectacular. And uh, all of the animals and seeing the Serengeti and a hot air ballooning uh, over the, the area of watching the migration happen. I mean, memories that still, again, memories, whatever you put your attention on, brings in that energy, that quality of that energy to reflect in order to determine the cellular response and that cellular emotional connection that occurs will determine whether you predispose yourself for illness or whether you allow yourself to activate incredible powers and strength and different types of resistance to illnesses, disease. You build up this level of disease tolerance, of immunization, inner immunization, because your state, 
your mental emotional state is what I've discovered after 40 years is what leads the way. And in my book that will be coming out early next year, Past Lives, Present Mind, Body, Future Family, Destiny, it's really a continuation of what the latest science is showing. And that is, it's not only what's happening in your life today, it is those particular codings that have been passed down through your parents, grandparents and great grandparents that create what we call intergenerational tags. And these tags are different enzymes, methylations being the most familiar of them. And they create a change in the way that your genes express themselves. And you have the same genes as you might have two twins that have the exact same genes but depending upon their environmental influences, and this is where epigenetics really came into its own back into the 70s, by studying identical twins separated at birth who grew up in different family environments to see how one of them became successful and happy and the other one became an alcoholic, heart disease, diabetes. And back then, everybody thought, ah, your genes your DNA, it's all hardwired. And you are what you parents and grandparents and you're stuck with it. And what we realize is, no, you're not, okay? They're tendencies. And the tendencies of what you're involved in in your life, the influences in your life, and that includes the fields of energy of your thinking and belief systems. Are they aligned to kindness? Are they aligned to forgiveness? Are they aligned to compassion? Or are they aligned to the egoic power of the need to control, to be superior? And so this has been my passion. And this is my 10th book that I've written. And it is something that I'm very interested in because the science is now going to see that many of the issues that a person has, and I think Joseph and every one of us knows you can give people all the information and do this and plan this out and go about this and create this particularly new discipline. And it works fantastic for a week or two, a month or two. And then all of a sudden you get sucked into something else and you just lose it. And you get drawn back into something that you don't even know what it is. You think it's you. You think there's something wrong with you, but the truth of the matter is, and this is where the science, some of the great work by Dr. Skinner and many others shows no, it's nothing to do with you. These have been passed down intergenerationally and been tagged onto your DNA in order to predispose you to these things and to the attitudes, to behaviors. And we've seen this scientifically, and I talk a lot about that in my book, and my existing book, which is available on Amazon, which is called The Epigenetics Cure, goes into it and gives you different protocols of what you can do to begin to unearth the secrets, the hidden aspects of trauma that are buried in your family tree and are affecting you in ways. And this is what the research has shown, which is so amazing, is that people who went through the Holocaust or people who went through droughts or people who went through any types of major issues that children and especially grandchildren and great-grandchildren can be affected by those traumas even though it didn't happen to them, they didn't know anything about it. They weren't involved with the emotional impact of that great grandparent. And now all of a sudden they're having struggles with depression, with anxiety, with obesity, with cancer. And this is what I've dedicated my life to and what my books and what my personal counseling work is all about is being that Sherlock Holmes to find out what is that that's unaware, that's in the unconscious mind. Remember, the body is the unconscious mind. And each one of us is coded with not what we put into it, we're coded with that from our ancestors. So we have been made to react and respond and develop in ways 
we think it's all about me. No, it's not. Okay. If you really look at it, there's really very little, if anything, about you that's really you. It's been passed on through generations, not just at a DNA level, but your thoughts, your beliefs, your religion, your all your systems of how you live your life have been placed inside you. And now you mix it this way and that way. Yeah, yeah. You 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 know, you've got the ingredients there, and yeah, you could be a different chef and be able to make the dishes a little bit differently and improve on them, no doubt. But until you understand that you might have ingredients inside you that's filled with hatred, that's filled with such trauma, and you're not going to do anything about it, and you'll get temporary gains, and this is what you'll see. And this is why medications have become so popular, and we've got such an over-medicated world that get billions, billions of prescriptions every day. Why? because they want to disconnect you, disassociate you, numb you from these influences inside you. And I say no, because that doesn't get you to look at it, to embrace it and face it and give yourself a chance to change. And I would just really want to just really give a really thumbs up to Carolyn, because I have found that one of the most important elements of all of this is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a process of recognizing the trauma, recognizing the mistakes, and owning it, even though it was not something you did. And that trauma, that need for forgiveness is something I've been focusing on in each one of my books, Accessing Your Inner Pharmacy, The Epigenetics Cure, and now Past Lives, Present Mind, Body, Future Family Destiny. And until you know you're in that prison of the secrets that your parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents kept, let me tell you, okay, they're influencing you whether you know it or not. And whether you use the language that they're changing the different circulation of your chi or whether we look at it from an epigenetics basis, that it creates distorted fields of energy that changes the way that each cell is then responding to it, and therefore your DNA is responding to that, it doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. Ayurveda has been talking about this for thousands of years, and Chinese medicine has been aware of it. And, and even though epigenetics is the new word that we've used over the last 50 years, these concepts and ideas have been around for a long time. And my goal, my passion, my love is I love the learning and being able to present this knowledge to people and show them there is another way and what and how they can do it. So here's the beauty these traumatic tags that are affecting people at a deep unconscious level are changeable. And we can actually go in and take these enzymes that have attached themselves to our genes and we can remove them. And that's where all the new science and development is going. I work at, at emotional, mental levels, spiritual levels, and Many of the pharmaceutical companies now are looking to say, gee, what pill can we give them in order to remove that tag? Well, I don't really give a darn what way you use. All I know is, first, you have to become aware of it. And second, you have to find an effective means that will work for you. And if it works and produces beneficial results, mazel tov. <laughs> right? We, right? This is a Jewish holiday. We got to bring in the muscle tough, yes, okay? And and whether you're using Qigong or meditation or Ayurveda or yoga or anything else, the key is this. There's an opportunity to redefine what and how you live your life by recognizing the impact that has been passed down from the past lives of your family members and are affecting you today. And I can tell you the journeys that I go on that sometimes take years with clients in order to do the research, to go inside, 
to find things that have been hidden, the secrets being held. You have no idea of the secrets that are hiding in your family tree. And nobody wants to talk about it. And when you bring it up, you get mean, nasty responses. No, we don't talk about that. No, that's something. <laughs> Watch out. Okay. And remember, if they're responding like that, there's something really there you want to know. Because if there's something there, they'd be happy to chit chat and look inside and, and go over and do some ancestral digging and, and Google this and that. And, and it's fun. And that's part of why I travel so much. I've been traveling around the world nonstop for seven years now. And I've gone to the place of my birth. And it saddens me. It's Ukraine. And when I see what's going on there now, understand there's a selective trauma that also gets embedded into the systems that we need to look at. So this is what I do. This is how I do it. And it's been such a joy to find like-minded people like Shelley, like Caroline, who have that same passion to help and be able to find alternative ways for people to be able to optimize their well-being improve their lives and live. I think what we're all destined to is to be happy, to be joyful, to be healthy. That is the doctrine I believe we all should follow, but uh, also realize um, we're responsible for it. Yes, I, I would have to agree, Brian. And I, I all of what you just said, I cannot echo enough. I mean, it is so enlightening. And can I tell everybody out there that Brian's book is actually helping me heal uh, from my broken bones and, and um, you know, and there's a certain amount of emotional issues that go with an injury like that. And so Brian, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I put a, a link to your books in the chat there for everybody if um, if you're interested in Brian's work and Caroline's book. It's in the chat as well. And uh, speaking of the inner workings of our mind, I mean, our minds are just and I, I mentioned that in the very beginning is that there is nothing more vivid than our own imagination. There is nothing when you're you're quiet and you you are writing. There is just such wonderful things come from just sitting there and thinking about what you're going to write about. And for me personally, I am writing a novel now and the things that come out of my mind, I'm like, where did that come from? So <laughs> having said that, I have to tell you that our next author, I have uh, read his latest book and I have to tell you that I was enthralled by it. It was um, scary in some respects, and it was incredible. And I was just thinking, you know, the way his mind works and the way he writes is just mesmerizing to me. So our next author, his name is David Bethel. Now, uh, John David Bethel, uh, for those of you that don't know him, he is an award-winning author who's He's got many novels. And David, I'm going to try to recite them all. Forgive me if I don't get them right. But one is Evil Town. One is Hotel Hell. Uh, the Unheard of. Holding Back the Dark. Uh, and another one called Washington, Washington Trilogy. But the latest one, the one that I just read, is called Mapping the Night. Uh, and it's my it's it's my favorite. Um, he has also been published in uh, popular consumer magazines and political journals, but he is just a wealth of knowledge. And Caroline and I, right, Caroline, we had the uh, distinct privilege of interviewing him for our KPW Publishing podcast. And he's just a fascinating individual. So, uh, David, are you on with us? I am right here. Oh, wonderful. Do you do you uh, tell everybody about you? And I am curious if you could lead with what motivates you to write? Where does these wonderful things, how do they come out of your brain? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's not, not entirely true. Um, for instance, Mapping the Night, it's actually based on a true story uh, of a uh, uh, a young woman uh, who was actually was murdered, unfortunately. Uh, I read about uh, this, this this particular case. She lived in a building with uh, in, in an apartment building in New York, 
uh, with a son. She was a single mother and uh, her, her, the people, her neighbors and other people in the building were concerned about her because they hadn't seen her or her child for a couple of days. And normally they saw them every day. He ran off to school. She ran off to work. So they called the police. They came in and did a welfare check. And unfortunately, they found that she had been murdered and raped. And uh, it, she was in her room and her little son was was kneeling next to her with a with ice in his hand, rubbing it over her forehead. And he explained to the policeman when they walked into this horrifying scene that this is the way he would make her feel. But this is the way she would make him feel better when he was sick. So he was trying to revive her and he, he was asking for their help uh, to make her better, make make mommy better. So this haunting scene just caught my imagination and I did a little research on the on the crime and on the aftermath. It turns out that that this, the, the perpetrator was a serial killer who had done this sort of thing to other women with uh, he pre he preyed on women, uh, single mothers with with boy children. And he had a signature that was highly unusual. Uh, signature being different than the modus operandi, but signature being what made his crimes different from any others. He would completely com clean the apartment immaculately uh, prior to each each of these murders that he that he committed, and he did it in a way that didn't wake anybody in the house. So this whole thing, this whole melange of of uh, the way it happened and and the circumstances and what he did and his his signature and all the rest of it caught my imagination. So I sat down and I just started. I wrote the first scene of the the cops walking into this this horrible this horrible mess and went from there. And I, I, I write a little differently, I think, than, than many people. Um, I just start. I, and wherever, wherever my mind takes me is where I go. So that's that kind of a long-winded answer to where do my ideas come from. They start with, with a single, and most of my, uh, my novels are based on, on uh, true crime or when I'm, my political novels are based on an experience I had when I worked in Washington. So long story short, I start with that kernel and I go from there. And I like to write the way I read. That is, I want to be surprised. I don't want to know what's coming next until it hits my brain. And then I put it down on a piece of paper. And before you know it, I've got 80,000 words and I've got a 300 page novel. But I don't plan any of it. I don't I don't storyboard or, or, or outline it. I don't write any character <laughs> studies or anything else. However it comes out, it comes out. Now, what that does mean, obviously, I, for those of you who are writers, and most of you are, I have to go back and clean up a lot. So it, it, there's a lot of editing that goes on if you write like this, because by the time you reach the end, you've had a lot of things happen that you didn't account for when you first started writing the novel. A lot of character development that went on from page one to page whatever that you didn't account for on page five. How is this person going to react? Well, he didn't react. He needs to react the same way on page five as he did on page 300. So you have to go back and clean that up and make sure there's a lot of consistency in it. Um, now, my attraction to these psychological thrillers to get maybe to some of the points that Brian and some other people made, I was not attracted to the, to the true crime genre because that's kind of just the facts, ma'am. Uh, it, it doesn't get inside the person's head. I wanted to know why these people committed these sorts of horrible acts. Um, and I wanted to know about the people that went after them. Why, why do we have people uh, profilers and uh, people that dedicate their lives to taking these people off the streets. One thing I've learned uh, through the course of 13 novels is that you're never going to understand them. Um, and and it, there's a saying that comes from uh, John Douglas, who was a, the man who put together the profiling unit at the, at the FBI. And he said, don't try and understand them. There's no understanding them. I've been doing this all my life. Uh, if you do understand them or you think you understand them, you're the sick one because you have now put yourself in their place. And if you think you understand why they do what they do, you've got a problem. And it, the old story of if, if you're standing at the at the foot of an abyss and you look too deeply, you might fall in. So be very careful, uh, you know, what, what, what you wish what you wish for in that regard. Um, now, my attraction to writing um, just came because I, I was, as I mentioned just a second ago, I was in politics for 30 years. Um, so, and I was a speechwriter. I was in communications. Uh, 
I've always written since I was five, you know, since I was in fifth grade, I remember I wrote my first short story in fifth grade. My dad had it typed up by a secretary. He brought it home in one of those little plastic container deals and I was off. I, oh my God, I have a published, you know, I thought I'd published a story by him bringing, bringing this home to me in, 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 a, in a version that, that, you know, that looked like it was published. So I, I was just thrilled to death. And also my dad was in the foreign service. So we spent most of my life traveling. I had big gaps in my education. Uh, I mean, sometimes as much as a month where I wasn't in school because we were traveling. My parents made me read. I became a voracious reader. And at some point, I, I just guess I just decided, well, I'm, I think I'm going to try this. Uh, I, I love reading and I'm going to try and see if I can't put some of these ideas and let my imagination run wild. So since uh, for as long as I can remember, I've always written. Fortunately, I was I was able to translate my my love for writing into a career for many years. Mm -hmm. And then when I, um, I, I, I did write while I was working, but of course, as it, it it's very difficult. I mean, it took me a year to write my first, to write my first novel. And then it took me another year to, to, to rewrite it because it was so badly written, given the fact that I was working all the time. Um, and, but since I've retired, I've written most of my, most of my 13 novels. So that that's a long winded way of answering your question. I hope I did. You definitely did. And for all of it, thank you very much, David. And I, for one, look forward to your next book coming out and even enjoying the ones from before. And uh, for everyone out there, we did put uh, a link to uh, David's most recent book, uh, Mapping the Night, in the chat for you to, to enjoy and access. So you have that. Thank you, David. Appreciate sure. that. Okay. And, and you know what, Elizabeth and um, Elton, I, I, we would like to extend both of you and everyone who is on the uh, Bright Side Book Club team, a huge thank you for inviting us here today. You know, it's always, always a pleasure for me to be online with, with all of you. You just have such a warm, cool vibe and, and we just absolutely love it. So for everybody that's out there, I'd actually like to leave you with my favorite quote, if I might. And that quote is by Marianne Williamson. And she says, uh, she talks about our greatest fear and I get chills when I talk about it. And she says, our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We are powerful beyond measure. And I think, you know, with our authors, every one of the authors that spoke today, that was demonstrated first and foremost, whether we're, you know, on an adventure on Kilimanjaro, we're powerful. Whether we're forgiving somebody, uh, we are powerful. Whether we're understanding the inner workings of the mind or drafting a novel that is just a, a thrill to, to read, we are powerful beyond measure. So I'm going to leave you with that. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And Elizabeth and Elton, again, thank you so much. We really appreciate you and all you do. And I want to uh, thank say thank you to Dr. Shelley. Uh, she's been, she when we first started, she was one of our keynotes and she's championed us. And uh, we did a lot of great, great stuff. And I'm so glad to renew it and continue on with you. So this is a great time and your authors were absolutely wonderful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so I wanna close out this segment telling you all to please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon, write us a comment. If you like any of these books, we'll make sure that their links are available in the comment section, buy it. One of Brightside's goal is to promote literacy. We want everybody and everybody and everybody to start libraries. We want everybody to read more because we are being consumed by the electronic media, which is great. We do video too, but we want to make sure that you read more. And just reading is such a great practice. And if you would buy all these authors' books, you could start a library in your home and talk about actually meeting them at the book club. So come attend, be our audience, uh, whether you watch it online or on social media, get these books. Uh, we are preparing for the holidays now and we'll be having our holiday reading list up. Uh, so make sure that uh, you get these books and you subscribe so you can find out more about these authors and their books as well. Um, and also uh, being self-published is a big deal. Uh, some of you might think it's so hard with marketing and all, but no, you guys are championing writing, telling your stories, uh, 
and uh, we do all the genres on this channel. Uh, we have different book clubs for different genres. And we recently started our children's book club, which is pretty successful too, uh, with Joanne Wagner and Bill Wagner. And uh, that's a pretty good event as well. Um, so without further ado, I will end this segment. I have two wonderful authors, Karen and Cinzi, uh, who I will bring on next. So thank you for watching. <laughs>